I'm Indy Nidell, and this is another exciting edition of The Great War on the Road. Now, you can see mountains and valleys and things behind me because I am standing right now in Slovenia, just a few meters, a few dozen meters from the Italian border. And we are obviously on the Italian front, and that's what we're going to look at today in several different specials. And I have a special guest today. Uh, can you tell them, all those people at home, who you are and what you do? Hi, my name is Leon. I'm from Foundation Walk of Peace from Kobarit and we are on the social front line and we will today visit the third line of Italian third line of defense and the trenches, bunkers and other historical places. So let's get going. Let's go. All right. So here it was like the net of trenches because of, it was the top of the mountain, so okay. they have, uh, we have a lot of trenches, mostly they are not cleaned or renovated because the area is too big and uh, like always we don't have enough money to pay the people okay. to clean the area. But uh, who does the maintenance for it? I mean, uh, we have a crew yeah? of three, three people okay. who, they go on this, we have this six outdoor museums and they they start in March, till the end of the October, they cut the grass, bushes, trees. Okay, and then of course the snow is coming. Uh, How high up are we now? Uh, here on the top we are 1,100, but top 1,114. Okay. Actually this is the lowest point. This is the lowest point. <laughs> yeah. So now we can see the Italian lowland. Wow. Cividale there. Okay, you got the Tony, the Italian lowland. And the border stone. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we can go. So we stand over here. We are in Italy. Yeah. So you're in Italy, and I'm in Slovenia, and we fight. Okay. Oh my God, my German crew is in Slovenia. <laughs> my special guest star is in another country. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can see all the way to all the way to the lowlands. Yeah. And if you have lucky, another hundred meters further, we can see the Italian uh, the seaside okay. down to Trieste. If we don't get a, well, uh, the clouds. if you look back over there, to the mountains back there, you can see all the clouds on the mountains further up. So, okay. Are we going further up or? Please. Okay. Okay, now over on the left, what mountains, what mountains are those in the sun? Actually, they were uh, front line. What you can see now, where the clouds is, this Mount uh, Merzliver, or Mount Cold. Okay. And on the top, they were Austro-Hungarians. Where, okay. the, where is the tree line, they were Italians. So they. The Italian, they must attack all the time toward top. And right, okay. Let's say, for, it, for Austrians, for Austro-Hungarians, it was much easier to defend themselves because they shoot toward down. And the cloud there is Mount Kuren, the highest uh, mountain, 2,244 meters. And this, on the first couple of offensive, these two mountains were crucial because the Italian, they, they try all the time to size the top. They reach the top of Kuren, but the Austrians, they didn't retreat. Uh, from the whole top, so... Uh, that looks impossible to fight on. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's really steep, if you go there it's really steep, but uh, we can really not imagine in what kind of condition they fight. They climb up yeah. and they shoot up and uh, the Austrians, they just throw the bombs down, like mm. free, free fall. Now, where, where would Bovek be from here? The Bovek is here, in this Bovec direction, toward so, order. So then uh, Tolmin is... Tolmin is down there, down there. Down there. you can okay. see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's cleared up uh, a little bit. Uh, so like during Caporetto, then you had the pincer movement, you mm -hmm, had some mm -hmm. troops coming down from Bovec and... Kind of, okay, uh, that's interesting. I'm just trying to get, you know, my picture so the people at home, because they, they've heard all these names okay. and now they can actually uh, uh. See, see what they're seeing and stuff. Um, okay, uh, well there's Tolman down here, Jan, yeah? Which we have mentioned mm -hmm. many, many times. Yes, from Tolmin, actually in October 17, the Germans start to advance from Tolmin up, from yeah. the south, from yeah. the north, from Bovets down to Austro-Hungarians, and they get together in Kobarit. Okay. So we stand in this third line of defense, which is very important because here the Socha and the mountains, they make 90% uh, 90 angle toward, from, the, from the west toward south. Okay. And here on the tr Italian trenches have arrived together. Okay. And when, when the Germans arrived at and size this position, yeah. so called Bavarian and uh, Wittenberger. Yeah. So they have free, uh, free view down to our Italian lowlands. Oh yeah. And the Italians, which were behind them in this area, so the Germans they looked to them to the back. Okay. So the front line collapsed, and there were two waves. 
the first the Italian, which started to retreat in more or less in panic, and then behind them the Germans, which they, all the time they tried to have the contact with the enemy. They didn't have, give them the time to reorganize. No time to reorganize uh, yeah. Which we saw was a like problem like at Gorizia with, yeah, the, yeah. with the, exactly. the Italians exactly. should have done. Okay, so, uh, all right, let's, now this is a fantastic view over here. At least we don't get all the clouds uh, today uh. for some reason. Uh, now, where is the sea? The seaside is just oh, as yeah, far. Okay. You can, on the end, you can see the line. Where I don't is know the if you guys can see the that. Trias Gulf. Yeah. yeah. So from here, the, the Italians, which they sized this on the beginning of the war, yeah. they have the nice control on all the area. They saw down to seaside, the edge of Julian Alps, the, 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 uh, the Socha uh, Valley. So they have nice control from here. It was a strategical point. Yeah, it was, um, it's a brilliant strategic point. Now, where, where exactly is Gorizia from? from Gorizia here? is here, okay. in this direction. It's right there. Oh. Yeah. So, so Gorizia and here down is Cividale and Udine in this direction. Okay. Yeah. And on the end we can see Mount Mataiur. Oh, Mount Mataiur. Yeah. Okay. Famous mountain which was the end of the... Uh, where fin they were finished the third line, the Italian third line. Right. When, when the Germans, and of course Erwin Rommel with his troops, have sized the top, the front line collapsed completely. Yeah, because Von Bello wanted no Italians in the mountains. Exactly, was, exactly. Yeah. So, so that's, we've talked about that uh, a couple times about Rommel and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, now, you said something interesting, though, before yeah. about another German. Uh, actually, the, the Rommel was not the first German to reach the top of the mountain. Actually, one day before it was already the German troops, yeah. not completely on the top, but on Mount Head or Mount, uh, a Small Head or Malaglava, yeah. which is Slovenian. So, but they didn't have no Italian resistance, so they retreat in the valley. Okay. So the, the Roman next day have just finished the war. Like, oh, all right, okay. Uh, nice story. So, <laughs> but just picture that you're an Alpino, you know, uh, and you've got a machine gun force. You, you don't need that many men to defend some of this stuff. This is really impressive, especially when you get good cloud cover. And stuff. Exactly. Now we can't even see over. Mm -hmm. Across there now, and that that that's regular weather. This is no. not special today. No, no, no. It's five minutes uh, clouds, five minutes clear. sunny. Uh. We got rained on ten minutes mm -hmm. ago, and mm -hmm. now it, now it, now it's sunny. Okay, well that's really amazing. Yeah. Okay, so uh, shall we move on? Yeah, let's go toward the uh, trenches. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is a whole uh, built area. So what are what are we looking at here? We have the trenches, so we can imagine what we saw that this soldier here they didn't suffer because of the mud. We have, in this area, we have a lot of rain, but because of geological structure, uh, all the water go into the mountains, to the earth, so there was no rain, uh, there was no water, no mud, they, uh, but they didn't have enough water, the soldiers. So it's like so a desert? Yeah, 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 kind of uh, uh, like Altiplano in South America. I mean, it's not so high, but no but water. No, so yeah. they had all the water, all the drinking water, and what anyway, they had to bring up here. Exactly. Okay. And we have here a trench, which is renovated, yeah. Uh, it's a uh, steel roof, yeah. which is original. On this steel roof, they the soldier they put about half meter of earth, so okay. they were somehow protected if the, the enemy shoot on them. Yeah. And of course, they didn't. The enemy couldn't it's count on them. Yeah. Uh, so most of these trenches was covered. Not only okay, this part. This, this is well to have the people they have idea how it was. The, the, oh, well, that's uh, great. Yeah, of course. Uh, it. Uh, 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 okay. Well, after you. So we'll see here the Italian machine gun position. Yeah. So because the, uh, here we are in a mountain, the Italian, they made some kind of dispositions like here oh, to, right, make, okay. to make a crossfire in the case of the attack. So oh, they right. have... You can really command the uh, valley. Down mm -hmm. toward Velia, toward where the uh, Germans arrived. At. Here they have all oh, these uh, Fiat Travelli or Virei Perosa, this, the most famous Italian machine guns, which they can shoot up to 600 bullets per minute. Ooh, loose boards. Yeah. So here is the entrance to the uh, Italian observation point okay. underground. Yeah. And we can go in and uh, it's nice, again, okay. nice view all down to the. Oh, to the let's valley. go in. Okay, dark. Uh -huh. Here on the left, watch out. On the stairs. So step there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, you can look at that one. So, again, nice view. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Either the, the Germans, when they reach the top, they have uh, they make a report that uh, the Italian line, they are good prepared, very good done. But unfortunately, the morale and the soldier, 
the Italian soldiers were unprepared on this kind of attack. Well, and also uh, the Italians had the problem with the phosgene gas. They didn't have the, uh, the proper gas. Mass. Yes, that's true. That's uh, actually, the gas was uh, used in Socha Frontline only twice. On okay. Mount San Michele on today in Italy, on Karst region, and here in October 17. In this October 17, about in a period of six hours, we shot at about two million of grenades, which 10% wow. was full of gases. Okay. Uh, chlor and phosgene. Yeah. But in the mountain, the gas didn't work because it's heavy and go down. Sure. And uh, always in the mountain, it's always a little bit windy. So the concentration didn't reach enough high level to kill the soldiers, but it's uh, uh, provocated the panic. So the Italians start to uh, just to abandon their position. <coughs> Excuse me. It is a staggeringly beautiful view from here, yeah. you know. And yeah, we can imagine it a hundred years ago if the, the soldier was not trained like today, they was not professional, they probably, they, a lot of them, they just look down there and why they ask themselves why they must fight, why they must... Now, the, the soldiers that were fighting here, <coughs> um, let's say the, uh, the Italians, for example, they, there were Alpino, mm -hmm. but not Pigni, but they weren't all trained. I mean, some of them, you were talking, some, there was some guys from the south, from like Sicily and stuff. Right? About, uh, about at least half of the soldiers were from the south of Italy. And so they didn't know snow and mountains? No, exactly. They were uneducated, untrained uh, well. Yeah. And of course, inappropriate unpro dress and their equipment was really poor. Like That must have been really, yeah. really awful. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's crazy. So this is some sort of like a dormitory or something? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now how many, how many beds would you maybe have in here? Uh, I think four. So okay. for four or six persons. But actually here, in this position, they didn't sleep here in these places because okay. they have the barracks and tents on the other side of the right, hill. Sure. But in the first line, they sleep mostly and they survived most of their time in the underground places because only there was in, on a safe place. Like yeah. And we can imagine on our side, in such a big place, 10, 15 persons, so, and without the water. That's the thing that keeps coming back to that, the lack of water, it's just uh They had the water, like, uh, already 100 years ago, it was the, uh, very crucial for the both sides. So we can go here on the right. Yeah. And we've seen the water thing on some of the other fronts. Uh, I know when we talked in Passchendaele that even though it became just a muddy swamp when the rains came, you couldn't use, do anything with that water because of the human waste and the dead bodies. And it was as hard to bring water up as it was artillery. And of course, on the Mesopotamian front, they ran out of water, they, and, in, and in the Libyan front and the Persian front, water was always, 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 always a problem. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Now we talked a lot about the, the dugouts and mm -hmm. tunnels and mm -hmm. everything blasted mm -hmm. into the rocks yeah. and stuff to really change like the whole yeah. structure of the Here in, scenery. In Upper Socha Valley we have a number, <coughs> approximate number, more than 600 such uh, underground bunkers. More than 600. Which was, they are all digged into the rock. So it was first year in the war with a sticker, with stick and a hammer and then they brought a drilling machine right. to, to and they have most of them, they have double entrance or double exit. In the, so in the case if... Oh, uh, this gets bombed uh, or something. They have still the, they uh, have the exit. And of course, all the tr other bunkers, they are made like in letter L or T. So the soldier, in the case of the explosion of the bomb, from the, bo uh, the uh, bunker, they were covered, uh, they were on a safe. Somebody's safe. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's go in. Man, this is, this is very, very Scooby-Doo. <laughs> like that crazy ghost is after us again, Scooby-Doo. Sorry. Hey, um, th this is concrete, the, the floor, uh, right? On the floor is concrete, yes, because here they have the soldiers and the engineer units, they have the time. So they prepared oh. very well. And you can see that they have a lot of small holes in. So it was made that it was not so slippery. Okay. Because after the rain, like today, the walk come through and we are 1,100 meters high can be very yeah. covered with ice, it's very... Would they try to collect as much of the rainwater as they could, like this kind of yeah, runoff? Yeah, absolutely, stuff? yeah. Especially in, in the first line on high mountains, where everything was necessary to transport it up. Right. With cable cars on a horseback, or mostly on a soldier's backpack. Okay, and what's in here? Here it was, we don't know exactly, or it was generator, or it was a phone central. 
We don't know exactly. Okay, but okay. But was the place like made especially for this. This is amazing. The yeah. uh, the engineering on the rock here. Now there's some stairs back there that we're going to yeah. go up. Yeah. Okay. Because this is the bunker in two uh, in two. Yeah, yeah, there's two different Good stairs, job. right? So that's cool. Look at this. Oh wait, what's this? Oh, this is the sign of uh, Italian engineer units. Aha! Uh -huh. So okay. the two axes and the uh, fireball is the, uh, the sign of these units. Okay. And the number one probably, we don't know, or is this the uh, battalion or platoon? Uh, which were, have were these common? Would you find these a lot? These? A lot. Okay. Uh, especially if some, like we have the, this uh, underground bunkers which they, t they have the name of the commander, like uh, Alphonse or okay. Pavlovich and so on. So if some officer, if the, the soldier like this officer, it's, if they name, they, they put the name. Uh, okay. So we can go here up on so the right, right side. Yeah. Okay. Ah, here we go. Okay. Ah, I see light. Huh? There are the stairs and it's very teeny for Ita okay. small Italian soldiers. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Okay. And up here. So here it was the Italian machine gun position. Okay, right, another one. Which okay. was destroyed in uh, October 17. But from here they have a nice view down to the Socha, to the first line, to the church of San Daniel, where were the most advanced Italian position. Okay. On the other side of the Socha, the first. That's the most advanced Italian yeah. position. It's great that it cleared up, and that's uh -huh. Tolman down yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And here we have a nice view on the second line. The Italian second line of defense was on this top of this hill. On, on the top bridge. of that hill uh, right uh, there. Jeez, even in nice weather though, it's pretty, yeah. pretty daunting. And uh, okay, so that, and what's down? What's here? And this here is, is really very tight. tight. Yeah, this is was made to protect the soldiers in the case of the bomb explosion. Oh, if you how you, yeah, an artillery shell yeah, coming. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, this is tight. Very, wow, very teeny. Small people. We, yeah, small people. We can imagine that the Italian was a little bit smaller. Okay. We have here one more. Machine gun position, machine the same gun. destroyed. Yeah. By the, it was hit by German <coughs> right. Yeah. Just all the way from there. That's a long way to fire. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's impressive. And then we oh this is the other stairwell. Okay. Yeah, cool. We can go here in. Uh now now these are interesting. These are this is concrete, yeah? Yeah. They are the shields from concrete. Pretty rare. Normally both uh, size they have the concrete from the steel, like yeah. so uh, fat, but uh, from concrete pretty rare. And what is most interested is they last year they start uh, they try to steal it. Couple really, of them. people yeah. come yeah, from the uh, collectors and they don't, they, they want to have it home. Say, so here one and on the end another two. They and then they broke them because it's now, a, now what is the law about you know what's protected and what's not protected? I mean. Uh, we have a law what said what that everything what is for, uh, more than 40 years old is under more than 40 years old. Uh, it's under archaeological protection. I, we're talking now what is in the earth. So okay, officially, yeah. you cannot go with, with metal detector because if the ranger find you or police, they will give you a fine and they can. And some people do though. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Okay. Cool. Yeah, these are amazing. Wow. Okay, so now we're looking out again. Bovec all the way up there. Exactly. The Tolman all the way there. Now. I mean, this is massive, and even I mean, it's a shame with the clouds. But so, where was the actual? Where was the Italian front line? It was high in the mountain, okay. which was we cannot that, see it. That the, up there, exactly. All the way up there. That was the front line. Yeah. Which begin on the Socha front line, begin on Mount Trombone, close to Bovet. Oh, Trombone, yeah, sure, yeah. okay, yeah, we sure. can see it a little bit on the end. That's speaking yeah. sure, okay. And went up in the mountains, and here slowly down to the Socha. So this is really this was really high mountain uh, air, uh, war zone. And it's really impressive, and you know, it's it's really easy to come and come and see this. Um, there's loads and loads of places to mm -hmm. stay, uh, and of course, uh, your walk of peace and stuff. Well, um, now you have a website, of course, too. Of yeah. course, we have our website in Slovenian potmiru.se, and uh, we'll put a link uh, 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 where we have all the information. We have the books, the guiding books about the Socha front line, and. Uh, we can organize the tour, the guiding tour in different area. We have six outdoor museums in Upper Socha Valley and six. Monocar, yeah, <laughs> like this today. I mean, and today. just even walking around, I mean, you guys can see it through a computer or a TV or something, but this is absolutely amazing. And I warmly recommend coming here 
and walking around what there is and, and, and meeting Leona. He'll take you out. Thank you very much for You're today. You're welcome. No it problem. It was really great. Thank okay. you. And um, if you would like to see our episode about mountain warfare, you can click right here for that. Do not forget to subscribe. See you next time.